Most of the organizations that appear very prominently during the late 60s and early 70s come from Texas. The League of Natal American Citizens formed in 29, the American GI Forum formed in 47, the student organizations, and then later MALDEF, the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund, and others. They originate in Texas. Most historians like to point to the farm worker strikes of the late 60s and early 70s as an important energizing element in this growing movement. There are many other things that occur before that and after that, but that is one very important marker, the organizing efforts by farm workers to strike for improved conditions and boycotts that allowed people outside the Mexican-American community to bring pressure on the farmers to sit down at the bargaining table with the farm workers. We helped in asking, particularly near campus, the liquor stores that were here, and asked them to take down the Gallo wines. Those are the ones that the United Farm Workers were boycotting if they would you know, do it voluntarily. And if they didn't, then we told them that we were going to demonstrate in front of their business. This was connected with Cesar Chavez's boycott on grapes. The walkouts of the late 60s and early 70s are also another very important marker. The anti-war movement as well, we had a number of demonstrations that allow us to join with other communities. The economy strike got a lot of people together, people that had never been involved. I tell a story about my mom. I never, I never dreamed that my mother, because she was kind of laid back, that she would ever get involved in anything. But there's the economy strike and a march down Congress Avenue, and there goes my mom, which, you know, I said, look at this, man. And everybody got involved because the economy strike was a big injustice to Mexican-American worker, without a doubt. The economy furniture was North Austin. I mean, back in those days, I mean, it might as well have been Waco. About 90-something 90, 90 percent were uh, Mexicanos working there, Chicanos. There were a lot of friends and buddies in that place. Lencho and Leo, all of them were working there. Buddy's brother, Buddy's father, they were all working in there. Buddy and I, we were living at his parents' house here on 30 and Waller. And my father-in-law would tell him, fíjate que so-and-so, who has been working here for 25 years or 30 years, they fired him because they didn't want to pay him his, his pension. I mean, that, that just was not right. But when I heard about their low wages and discrimination and the way that the setting where they work was set up. The most important was the disrespect that the company had for us. The fact that they would not promote our people, the wages that they paid us, and uh, the way they treated us on a daily basis. Well, I think it opened my eyes to be able to kind of look at, at events and say, what's happening here? What, what is really going on here? And it was pretty clear with the economy furniture strike, it was about not paying people appropriately for the work that they do. And they wanted to also form a union. There were all these efforts uh, on the part of the owners to, to not let that union occur. And, uh, and it kind of makes you wonder, you know, but that's the right that people have. Buddy knew that you had to unionize. You have to all stick together. If we all stick together, the power of the people is quite potent. And they refused to negotiate, so then we took a vote to strike because we felt like that they were not going to recognize the union. So we decided to go ahead and, and vote for the strike and it was overwhelmingly in favor of going out on the strike and we did. It was not even maybe a week or so when they all said, okay, we're gonna walk out and my father-in-law, he walked out with them and his brothers walked out with them and my father-in-law became totally committed to the cause. All of a sudden he said, you know, you're so right. We cannot allow them to treat us this way. I'm sick and tired of it. So he became a big spokesman and they all walked out and it was hard because, you know, um, no income and how are they gonna feed their families? I would photograph the pickets, you know, walking up and down the street and they had a striker's shack, you know, this galvanized building that they worked out of. We would uh, 
change pickets and they would uh, their rest while they were waiting for uh, to relieve other picketers. We maintained a picket line for the duration of the strike. One Saturday, my dad told me we're going to go. They're going to have a, a protest, a march. Uh, against what's happening at the Economy Furniture, and it's going to be downtown. He didn't work at the Economy Furniture, but he had relationships with others. They had a march in Austin on Congress Avenue, and uh, at that time we had uh, a Mayo chapter that wore brown berets. We, are, we were a brown beret group, but was a Mexican-American youth organization, Mayo. And we brought a busload to join them over here, and uh, that's how we met people like Lenjo and Leo Hernandez. So I participated in the march, and I just, I was really blown by it because I saw so much raza. Like, I was going like, wow, que raza is really upset about what's going on, and, and they're together, and you know, they're taking a march, and everywhere I look, I could just see everybody who looked like me, but people who were standing up for their rights, right? They were taking these actions and so forth. And so I, I just felt really proud, you know, and I was really happy to be there with my dad. And um, being there, you know, was uh, an inspiration for me uh, to really like continue, you know, advocating against injustices. It was a very, very beautiful uh, experience for me to see because Cesar Chavez even came to support them. I even had the honor of taking a photo with him and one of the one of the women leaders. You know, we even went to the Capitol and took a photo with the men leaders against a glimpse that talked about civil rights. And I remember Cesar Chavez coming to the Montapas community. I thought it was such a big honor <laughs> to uh, to have Cesar Chavez here. Their relationships were more about with the relationship he had with the economy workers and that group of people, even though we were the broader community. What an honor it was, again, to see someone working for the workers' rights who understood it. We said to ourselves, that strike is going to be won. In fact, it already has been won because the people there are willing to pay the price and not a lot of hard work. They're setting the stage for white organizations, labor organizations among the Chicanos, not only, not only in Texas, but in many other states around Texas. Oh gosh, it was just overwhelming. And I couldn't believe that he was here. I couldn't believe that I was seeing the person. That strike got settled about 72, but uh, at that time they were totally unemployed, but they gave a lot of their time, man. And they put up all the signs, they made them, they put them up, they kept an eye on them, and they and they walked, and they were an army. The workers voted in a National Labor Relations Board election for representation by the Poultry International Union of North America, AFL-CIO. Uh, we, we voted to have them represent us in collective bargaining. There were a lot of marches, and there were large numbers of people involved, and there was a lot of energy and uh, a lot of flyers were given out door to door and to stores and, and everybody was doing that. East Austin, South Austin as well. But, but there was a lot of energy and there was a lot of togetherness in trying to work for that effort. 